This episode was sponsored by Skillshare. Even though no individual insect can claim the number one spot on the tier list over the human build, insects as a whole are easily the most successful build type in the history of the game. The average insect ranks much higher than the average mammal or bird, and this has been true even since before the devs added dinosaurs into the game. I plan to make many insect tier lists in the future, but I'm making this video now because rumors have started to circulate about leaks that data miners have found concerning new, unannounced balance changes to the insect class. Today I want to talk about the content of this discovery and its implications both for the insect player base and for the meta as a whole. Outside's community got understandably freaked out when data miners discovered a new hidden balance patch titled Insect Apocalypse. Are insects being banned? Are insects being nerfed? Is it all insects or only specific builds? Well, lucky for you guys, Tirzu is here to give you the scoop on the Insect Apocalypse balance patch in its entirety. First things first, no, the Insect Apocalypse is not a universal balance change that affects all insect builds. Most of the nerfs, and buffs too, there are a few of those, center around changes to the overworld itself, which directly affects insect mains. But anyways, let's discuss which insect builds are going to be most affected. There are two main groups affected, the first of which is the specialist builds. Many insect players have an extremely refined playstyle. Everything about their gameplay is highly specific. They eat only specific plants, prey upon specific players, and reproduce only in the exact right conditions. Naturally, these players are much more vulnerable to having their game plans disrupted. And, well, there's a lot of disruption going on. Because of that, many of these strategies are becoming unviable. Obviously, there are millions of potential examples, so I can't talk about everything. But one example most players will recognize is... Monarchs are highly selective in their early game XP sources. During their early game, they feed exclusively on milkweed, which makes sense because this grants them an important perk, poison. They can't exactly spec into a generalist build without sacrificing their only line of defense, so they're in a tough spot as milkweed becomes rarer in-game and gets cleared by humans to plant crops. The second type affected the worst are builds like mayflies, dragonflies, and stoneflies. These all share one thing in common. The first few levels of their playthrough are aquatic. They start out the game in a river, pond, or swamp, and have to level up by hunting there before they reach the level where they unlock wings and leave their aquatic biome. The aquatic biome has become a lot tougher to survive in if you've got a sensitive respiratory system, as it's become increasingly toxic, mostly due to runoff. Robust builds like catfish can tank the added pollutants just fine, but fragile nymphs don't have that ability, and so builds that have to lay eggs in water are seeing a decline. Now for the builds that will do well. You'd probably guess that if specialists do poorly, generalist insects will do extremely well. And you'd be right. Honestly, I wouldn't expect generalist insects to experience much difficulty from this patch at all. Builds that aren't picky about their XP sources will still be able to find their way, and should see their player bases remain relatively stable. Builds like the Cabbage White Butterfly, a generalist butterfly build, and the Ladybug, a generalist beetle build, are examples of great choices to survive the update. Especially the Ladybug, because it's got a mild poison that deters birds. This poison doesn't require a specific diet like the Monarchs does. And considering birds have a lot less potential targets now that many of the aquatic insects are falling out of the meta, this protection will be even more valuable. But there are some insects that have even been buffed in this patch. And these are the scavengers. Same perks as generalists, but also don't require access to the shrinking meadow biomes that most insects depend on. In fact, most of these builds do better in cities. There are a few obvious examples that I'm sure you're well aware of. For example, cockroaches. Roaches have been skyrocketing up the tier list ever since they first expanded out of their African home server back during the colonial meta. But the insect buffed the most in this patch is the yellow jacket. Yellow jackets have been spiking in population lately due to milder winters and drier springs, and they're perfectly suited to human dominated environments such as cities and parks. Yellow jackets have great DPS, mobility, and defense for their size, and function super effectively as generalists. They can also hunt pretty effectively from the air and take on other players outside their own weight class solo, and take on players far outside their weight class in groups. They can build their bases anywhere and love to eat the scraps other players leave behind. A trash-filled world is a paradise for Yellow Jackets, and considering how quickly landfill biomes are expanding, it's no surprise that they're growing in numbers too. A quick lightning round for some other insect builds. Their respawn point, the meadow, is becoming more scarce as farmland biomes replace them. But in most places, their populations are doing fine. Although in America, the variant that had the swarm ability actually got banned. 
mantises are not picky when it comes to what they'll catch. While they're still nerfed by the reduction in forest biomes, mantises, along with spiders, are still the most effective stealth build for that weight class. Their success depends on how badly the nerfs affect the number of other flying insects that they come across. Since many of these insects are part of the category hit by aquatic nerfs, they could potentially be in trouble, but certainly not doomsday levels. Honeybees are dealing with their own set of nerfs called Colony Collapse Disorder. This is a separate thing from the insect apocalypse, so we aren't going to go into too much detail. Other types of bees, wasps, and hornets are generally doing alright, although the other bee builds in particular are actually being shut out a bit by the invasive honeybees. Plenty of non-arthropod builds will become less viable with fewer insect players around. The two main groups affected are the fish and the birds. Fish have a pretty easy matchup against aquatic insects, especially the ones which leave the water once they're in their most powerful final form. So without as many of these players around, fish will need to find another source of easy XP. A similar thing can be said about birds. Many birds rely on flying insect mains as an easy source of XP too, although birds generally have a lot more options besides insects. Pollinators are some of the most heavily affected, so the human player base is also potentially in trouble because of their reliance on pollinated crops. However, many of the humans' crops, like corn, are pollinated by wind, so I wouldn't get too worried if you're maining human right now. Anyways, overall I don't think the insect apocalypse balance patch is as bad as people initially thought. Insect builds are among the most adaptable and versatile in the game, and because of their extremely quick respawn time, they are able to come up with counter strategies relatively quickly. In addition, these nerfs are mostly just due to resources becoming more limited. The climate change balance patch has very little to do with the insect apocalypse, and honestly, if the human player base really wanted to, they're powerful enough to reverse it. Planting native plants is basically all that needs to be done in order to reverse the effects, and like I said, insects respawn so quickly that they'll easily bounce right back if the right conditions exist. So there's plenty of reason to have hope in this case. By the way, I got a lot of the footage in this video from some extremely talented wildlife photographers. I really respect the work that they do, and I hope to be able to reach the same quality myself someday. That's why I've been taking photography classes on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in design, business, technology, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on must-know topics, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. For example, this photography course helped me understand a lot of the basics for shooting outdoors. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for my subscribers. Get two months of Skillshare for free. To sign up, visit the link in the description, and the first 500 visitors will get two months of unlimited access for free. Act now for this special offer and start learning today. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and thanks especially to my patrons on Patreon. Until next time, good luck out there.